In this lesson, we'll talk about linear inequalities of one variable. The first thing we need to do in order to solve these inequalities is we need to learn the rules that we're allowed to use. So we call these the properties of inequalities. If you have some sort of algebraic expression being less than another algebraic expression, and we're trying to solve this inequality, we are allowed to add any expression we want to both sides of the equation. With that said, if it were negative, this is the same as subtracting. So, we can add or subtract any expression we want from both sides of the equation, and the inequality symbol stays exactly the same. Next, if we have another expression like a is less than b, where these can be any sort of algebraic expression, and I multiply by a positive value, or divide for that matter, you'll notice that the inequality does not change. Less than stays less than. But if I have a less than b and I multiply or divide by a negative value, the inequality symbol flips. The general rule is you may add or subtract whatever you want for an inequality and the inequality stays the same. However, if you multiply or divide by a negative number, you have to reverse the inequality symbol. However, for positive numbers, this is okay. Let's jump right into an example. So here we've got some inequalities to solve, and I'll start out by adding 3x to both sides. Like I said, you're welcome to add an expression to both sides. And while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and subtract 6 from both sides. I get 5x is less than or equal to negative 10, and so I divide by 5, and since that's a positive number, the inequality won't change. I get x is less than or equal to negative 2, and since this problem wants my answer in interval notation, remember that less than or equal to means we're going to be going to the left of 2, so we start at negative infinity, and we stop at negative 2 with a bracket. The bracket is because of the fact that this is a less than or equal to, not just a less than. Next example. Let's start out by subtracting 3x from both sides like we did a moment ago. And we will add 7 to both sides. So here we get negative 2x, and we get greater than or equal to 12. So now we would simply divide by negative 2 on both sides. And here's the big important thing. I just divided by a negative number. So when I write my answer, I have to flip my sign. Now 12 divided by negative 2 is negative 6. So similar to the last one, I have negative infinity to negative 6 with a bracket. So this is the general strategy for these. We simply want to make sure that if we multiply or divide by a negative number, we flip the sign. Let's move on to the next example. Now this one has fractions in it, so the first thing I'll do is multiply by a value that will get rid of all the denominators. In this case, I think I'll use 10. So when I multiply by 10, I get 2 and 1 in the first problem. So I have 2 times 1 minus x, and since I multiply by a positive value, it's still greater than and now I get negative x. So we get 2 minus 2x is greater than negative x. And then what we can do is we can add x to both sides. And I'll go ahead and subtract 2 at the same time. That leaves me with negative x is greater than negative 2. Now I can divide by negative 1, and that leaves me with x. But now that I divide it by a negative number, I will flip my sign, and I get positive 2. So negative infinity to positive 2, it's parentheses this time, because it's strictly less than, is my answer. Next we have what we call a compound inequality. What this simply means is, if we write a less than or equal to b less than or equal to c, that means the first inequality holds, and the second inequality holds. Often what we do with these is we try to figure out a range of numbers that x stands between. Switching out symbols with less than or equal to with less than, you can do it to one or both symbols. But often we do this only with less than or less than or equal to. We don't usually write these with greater than symbols. 
So if we deal with a negative number, we'll take care of that. First example, what you want to do is get x by itself, just like in any other problem. But to get x by itself, you have to do things to all three sides. So I would add 6 normally. So I'm just going to add 6 to all three sides. I get negative 30 is less than 3x is less than or equal to 18. And now I'll divide by 3, but again, I'll divide all three sides by 3. And I get negative 10 less than x less than or equal to 6. There's my answer. And to write it in interval notation, we're going to have negative 10 with parentheses because this is a less than, not a less than or equal to. We're going to stop at 6, and because it's a less than or equal to, we get a bracket for this one. The next example has fractions in it again. Let's take care of the fractions again by multiplying by 6. Why 6? Because the largest denominator is 6, and 3 will also cancel out if I multiply by 6. So what we get here is a 2. The 6 is cancel in the middle term, and I get a 2 in the far right term also. So I get 2 is less than or equal to 7 times x minus 3 is less than 2 times 2 is 4. Now at this point we might as well go ahead and divide by 7. You could distribute the 7 if you want but that would add more steps to your work. So I end up with 2 sevenths is less than x minus 3 which is less than 4 sevenths. And now all I have to do is add 3 to, to uh, all sides and I'll be finished. So I'm going to do these kind of quickly, but feel free to pause the video and make sure that my arithmetic makes sense. I get 23 over 7, because 3 would be 21 over 7 plus another 2 is 23 over 7. Same thing here, 21 over 7 plus 4 over 7 is 25 over 7. As interval notation, this is 23 over 7 to 25 over 7 fairly small range of numbers. Let's do an applied problem here. So we've got the final grade in a class depending on five tests and each test is worth 100 points. So a student gets these four scores on their first four tests and so what we want to do is figure out how the student can earn a C in the course given these four test grades. What we're going to do is we're going to write an expression if you want to calculate their average, remember their grade in the class is just the average of five tests. Let's call the last test an x. As you know, if you want to take an average, you add the five numbers together and then divide by however many numbers there are. This is their average in the course. Now, if we want that average to be a c, then it needs to be at least 70 and no more than 80. We'll start out by multiplying everything by 5. That should make this a good bit easier. So I get 350 is less than or equal to all of this stuff. 5 times 80 is 400. Next step I'll do is add these four numbers together. 266. So now all we do is subtract the 266 from both sides of the equation. And let's see, on this side we get 84, and on this side we get 134. So remember, a test grade can only be up to 100. So as long as the student makes at least an 84 on this test, then they will make a C in the class. And just to write it a little bit more formally, note that this could be basically written as less than 100. So, in interval notation, the grade would have to be in the range of 84 to 100 in order to make a C in this particular course. Next thing for us to work on in this lesson is the concept of an absolute value inequality. Again, we'll stick with something linear here, just one variable. An absolute value inequality is when you have some sort of variable expression that shows up inside the absolute value. Now there are two rules for these. 
I'll tell you now. You need to know these rules. The rules are, if you have a less than or less than or equal to, you rewrite the problem with this k being a number that's positive, as the negative of that positive number is less than or equal to what's on the inside of the absolute value is less than or equal to this original positive number. We turn a less than or equal to into a compound inequality. If we have a greater than or equal to, we create two expressions to solve. For one of them, we simply drop the absolute value. For the other one, we say it has to be less than the negative of this value. This holds for greater than or equal to and also the greater than equations. Let's work on a few of these so that we have plenty of examples to work on. First one is a greater than or equal to. Again, the first thing you need to know is you need to know these rules. The rule is split it into two equations when it's a greater than or equal to. So the first one, you just drop the absolute value. The second one, you say, is less than or equal to the negative of that value. First equation, just drop the absolute value. Second one, drop the absolute value, but write less than with the negative value. And then we just solve these as usual. If I add 3 to both sides, I get 2x is greater than or equal to 8. And dividing by 2, I get x is greater than or equal to 4. Over here, 2x is less than or equal to negative 2 by adding 3 to both sides. And then x is less than or equal to negative 1 by dividing by 2. Note in both cases, I divided by positive 2, so my inequality symbol never flipped. Now, with that said, we've got x is less than or equal to negative 1, and x is greater than or equal to 4 as my two possible answers. We've got this or between them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the one that would be on the left. This one would be negative infinity to negative 1 with a bracket. Bracket because this is a less than or equal to. And the other one is x is greater than or equal to 4. So this is everything to the right of 4. And we include 4 in our answer. Interval notation has a symbol that we often use in this particular case called the union symbol. Next example. This time, the absolute value needs to be brought by itself. So this is actually a first step that you do in many of these problems. You get the absolute value by itself. So the first thing I need to do is subtract 7 from both sides. Now notice that there was a negative sign here, and I kept the negative sign. So the next thing I'm going to do is divide by negative 1 to get rid of the negative sign. Now when I do that, again, anytime you multiply or divide by a negative number, flip your sign. So check this out. In this particular problem, you might be tempted to use the rule, but the rule doesn't apply. Remember, for this rule, for either the less than or the greater than rules, this number has to be positive. If it is not positive, your rule does not apply. But it's actually pretty easy to figure out what's going on here. So think to yourself for a second, what types of numbers come out of an absolute value, positive or negative? Positive, right? So if I have a number come out positive, will it ever be less than negative 5? It can't be less than negative 5. So let's write this down. So our solution is no solution. Why? Because any value you put in is not going to solve this thing. Let's move on to the next one. So again, this absolute value is not by itself. So the first thing I'm going to do is divide by 3. This is 3 times the absolute value of x minus 4. So you need to divide to get it by itself. So we have the absolute value of x minus 4 is less than 2. The symbol does not switch since this number was positive. And now we can apply our rule. The rule for less than is take this number, make it negative compared to the absolute value inside, and then keep the less than 2. You drop the absolute value, but also put a negative 2 over here. It gets sandwiched between the positive and the negative values. So now I just add 4 to all sides. I get 2 less than x, less than 6. So my interval notation would be 
2 to 6 in parentheses. Next example. Again, the absolute value is not by itself, so I will subtract 7 from both sides right off the bat. Always start by getting the absolute value by itself. But here we go again. We've got this negative value here, but this time it's a different symbol. So let me ask you this. Anything that comes out of this absolute value will be positive, right? Is that bigger than negative 5? Of course it is. So any value coming from the absolute value of 6x minus 2 will be positive. And this is always greater than negative 5. So this time our solution is negative infinity to infinity. All solutions work for this one because any value of x will give you a positive, which is greater than a negative. Sometimes we use this symbol, if you'd like, to represent negative infinity to infinity. And you recognize that symbol. That's the symbol for the real numbers. Let's do one more. So again, the absolute value is not by itself. Let's subtract 6 from both sides for starts. Now I'm going to divide by negative 5. Notice I'm dividing by a negative number. So I need to flip my sign. Now we're into a standard form. The absolute value is by itself. So the question you should make sure to ask yourself is, which rule do I use? What does the rule say? The right rule to use here is do negative 2, same sign, drop the absolute value, and rewrite everything. Subtract 2 from all three sides. I get negative 4 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 0. So here's my solution negative 4 to 0 with brackets because of the less than or equal to symbols. Alright, these last two equations are for you to try. So feel free to pause this video and see if you can do these. Remember, the rules that you use are very important. Okay, now that you're finished with these or perhaps stuck, let's go through and see if we can do it. The starting point for this one is we're going to write 5x minus 9 is greater than 6, or 5x minus 9 is less than negative 6. This is the rule for greater than every time. We drop the absolute value for one of them, and we switch it to less than a negative for the other one. Add 9 to both sides, and divide by 5. Same thing here. Add 9 to both sides and divide by 5. So we get this answer and in interval notation we've got parentheses for everything and don't forget this union symbol between my answers. If you got that, great! Now for the next one, if you haven't done it yet, feel free to pause the video again. Give these a try. So I'll subtract 4 from both sides to start with. To get 3 times the absolute value of x plus 1 is less than or equal to 3. Then I'll divide by 3. It's positive, so the sign is fine. I get absolute value of x plus 1 is less than or equal to 1. This rule is going to be negative 1, less than or equal to x plus 1, less than or equal to positive 1. Subtract 1 from all three sides. I get negative 2 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 0, which is negative 2 to 0 with brackets for this answer. Alright, finally, I want to do a quick couple of examples of how you would translate English to inequalities. So x is at least as large as y. One of the implications here is if x is equal to y, then yeah, it's still at least as big at least would be greater than, so this is greater than or equal to y. x is at most y. It could be fine if x were equal to y for this also, but at most means, well, it can't be more than y, so it's got to be less than or equal to. x exceeds y. That usually means it's larger and cannot be the same. x is smaller than y. That means it's less, but it can't be the same as y. And then finally, x is no less than y. 
Well, certainly you might be thinking greater. No less would mean it can't be smaller, but it could be equal. So this is another greater than or equal to.